Welcome back and in this video I'm going to cover the code coverage. So, so you have your tutorial Java package, you have your three files and we already in previous video went over what's inside of tutorial.java. So let me bring it up again because now let's talk about what we have to test for code coverage. So if you remember code coverage you can have um, basically three different types of code coverages. You can be testing for statements, for branches, and for paths, right? So what's a statement? Well, a statement is any executable code. So for example, this is a statement and it happens to be a assignment statement, right? It assigns negative one to the attribute ATTR int, right? So this is a statement. Well, what other statements we have? Well, on 31, line 31, we have another statement. This happens to be a condition, and it happens to be a condition for an if, if statement, right? So this is our if statement. And then on the next line, we have a throw statement, right? And on the next line, well, we have an else statement, right? Uh, and so forth. Now, when you, with the braces aren't the statements, right? Because these aren't executing anything, actually, right? They you need that to designate that the else statement, right, which is this whole thing is an else statement, that it has uh, multiple lines of code, right, which is these two lines of code. Um, and then, but inside of the if statement, right, we have another, I mean, instead of else statement, we have another if statement, right? So you can have nested statements, right? You can have a statement within a statement, and then we have another throw statement, and then we have another assignment statement right and over here we have retain return statement and then down here we have a while loop statement or actually this whole thing is is a while loop right this whole thing is a while loop within the while loop we have a couple of assignment statements right all right so these are the statements so now let's talk about code coverage, 100% code coverage using statements. Well, that means I want to execute every statement in this code, right? So I'm going to have multiple test cases, but together, when I run all the test cases, I want them to execute every statement in this code, right? For every method, every constructor, I want to execute every single statement. Right now, the with code coverage or any coverage for that matter, you always want to have the most minimum set. You know, in other words, you don't want to have multiple test cases that are testing the same exact thing. Right? You only want to have just enough test cases to test exactly the criteria you want to test. Otherwise, you're wasting your time basically, right? Because the extra test cases aren't doing anything for your test. All right. So okay. So let's talk about how many statements do I have to test in code coverage. So if I'm doing 100% statement coverage, how many statements you think I need to test, right, in this first constructor? You know the answer? Well, two, right? We need to test line number 18 right here, and we need to test line number 19, right? So I need two tests. Why do I need two tests? Well, because I'm going to be checking my first test is going to be checking the value of the attribute integer, and the second one is going to be checking the attribute string. And remember that in a single test case for code coverage, you only want to be checking a single value, right? A single value, because to check every value, I need an assert statement, and I should only have one assert statement per test. So let's look at the next constructor. Well. Next constructor for code coverage using statement. How many statements do I need to test? Well, I'm going to need to test the if loop, right, which is right here. So I'm going to need a test case to test line 32, right, line 32. Why I don't need a separate test for 31? Well, because remember, we're trying to have minimum set of test cases, right? So we don't want to have a test case that's only checking if, because how would you know that this if actually did anything? The only way you know if this if actually did anything is if you check some statement within the if, right? Which happens to be 32. 
So for this test case, the first statement I'm actually going, or the first test case I'm going to need is for line 32. And then similar for the next one, right? So next, what else I want to check? Well, I want to check the else part and the statement there. Well, the statement there is another if, right? So again, what I want to check next, or what I want to have a test case for next is line 36, right? That giving this if that is going to throw this, this next value, right? So I'm going to check one test case is going to be 32. Another test case is going to be line 36. And then what, what else? Well, then I have two statements over here. So again, I need to test 39 and 40. So how many test cases will I need? I'm going to need four test cases for this tutorial to test every line of code. Because again, I'm only checking one value at a time. So I'm checking that this throw happens, that I'm checking that this throw happens, that I'm checking that this assignment statement gets executed, and then finally that this one does. All right, for test cases. All right, what about next one? Well, it's just one, one, there's only one statement, so there's going to be one test case. Now, get, get methods are considered when all they do is return the value. They're considered trivial, so a lot of times you won't even bother having these um, test cases. All right, and our last one, our last method, how many executable statements to test do we need? Well, we have the first statement right here. Uh, which is just checking, which is uh, assigning the empty string to it. However, in order to test that it actually uh, assigned that, right? We need it needs to skip the loop, and the next statement it should uh, execute is 65, right? So the test case we actually going to have to test that it actually did it correctly over here is is one where it never enters the loop so it's going to be it, it needs to be a test case value where the loop nev never gets entered right however remember we're trying to do the minimum set in terms of statements so the first statement is going to get executed every time it comes in a loop so if we're trying to test this line right here right well, it's going to execute this line and it's going to execute this line anyway, right? So in terms of testing for line numbers, I don't need a separate test case, right? Because if I have something that goes inside of the loop, it's also going to test that it execute this, it execute this, it executed this, it executed this, right? And executed this, right? So how many test cases do I need in order to test um, this, this method for statement? Well, actually one, right? Because anytime, anytime you have where a statement has to be tested, like it doesn't have a branch and you're only checking one value, then you just need one. And remember, we're only checking one value here, right? We're only checking what the result's going to be. Right, because these statements are just this one is actually changing the result, but this one's just looping, right? It's doing a loop. So <clears throat> if I have a value of attribute integer that goes in the loop, it has to execute both statements. So single test case is going to execute all lines of code. And which what are the executable statements? Well, 59, 62, 63 and 65. So single test case is going to test that all these four statements have been executed. Okay, so that's code coverage using statement. Now let's talk about branch. If we're doing a branch, then we have to look at every branch. Well, an if statement, if else, is a branch, right? It has a condition. And for branch coverage, we want to make sure that each condition is false and each condition is true. So we would need one test case where this if condition evaluates to true, and then we would need one that evaluates to false, right? So that's two, two test cases, right? Different values. So first time it's true, next time it's false. And then we have another branch right here. So again, we want to have 
a test case where this condition evaluates to true and this condition evaluates to false. So we have four test cases for branch statement. Now, when we did the statement coverage, right, we already had a test case that execute line 32 and we had a test case that execute line 36 right so we already have two test cases one where this condition first one condition is true another test case where the condition is false right so we already covered the true and false in this case and we also had a test case where this condition is true right because that's the only way this line 36 have executed so a statement coverage already has three out of the four test cases that we need for branch coverage so the only thing we would add for branch coverage is the statement where this is false right so that's the only thing we would have to add one more one more uh, test case